this is a you know the great johannes podcast episode it's basically a live stream where i just want to talk to you about let's start talking to you about um what's going on in the netherlands uh the political system is just a big fat joke so the there's a political party in the netherlands the party for freedom called the pvv with geert wilders that guy who blondes his hair bleaches his hair blonde he uh he was always a hardcore anti-islamist a hardcore anti-immigration closed borders right and and it just turned into a joke he won the election he had most seats in the parliament but he's not allowed to be prime minister instead of electing him the prime minister they made the the boss of the uh they made the boss of uh, of the sec- of the Dutch the former boss of the Dutch secret services of the AIVD the intelligence uh, they made that guy prime minister and now in the past just the past week or so when they have finally formed a cabinet to rule the country they basically forced the winning party the PVV of Geert Wilders to make all sorts of impossible concessions like he has to take back everything he said about Islam he has to take back everything he said about closing the borders or about replacement immigration which he always believed in and all of a sudden it's a conspiracy theory and it's right wing and ultra ultra right wing and you can't mention the words anymore it's almost as though there's a Turkish lady who is now in charge of another party uh, she came to the Netherlands as a refugee and it's very clear that they want to push her to be prime minister someday and it's almost as if that Turkish lady is the one really in charge now, despite the fact that the majority of the Dutch population voted for uh, change, voted for anti-immigration. It's just it's just hilarious. What a what a twisted joke this all is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. How's that legal? Yeah. All right. I'm going to switch. Oh, I'm going to switch to another. Uh, di- oh. All right, I hope that one well. I switched to a different uh, template. And so you can scru- you can subscribe by the way if you want to my uh Substack newsletter called uh, jmk.info. I'll turn that off for a moment. All right. So, I think what the Netherlands is is a prime example of a captured society. It's a small country, 18 million inhabitants almost. And we are being ruled by well, you tell me. The Eurocrats from Brussels probably have more to say about us. The Netherlands is an experiment where they pretend to be a democracy so that they can make people go along with a program that is absolutely anti-Dutch, anti-native, anti-natalist, anti-birth, anti... It's pro-immigration, everything. I think they're trying to use the Netherlands to make out of the Netherlands an example of the dreamed global open society you know that dream of uh, George Soros Karl Popper and Henry Bergson I've already debunked that book uh, I'm sorry I've debunked that idea of the global open society in my book uh, Revival of the West uh, I'll type it out on screen by the way you can find it still on uh, Amazon by me Conrad uh, and it's a t- it's well, I'm not going to repeat the book I wrote, but it's just delusional to think that you can even have something like a global society and then keep it that way because it would require two police officers for every citizen. And then who's going to police the police, right? You would have an extremely totalitarian hierarchical civilization. Uh, immediately, people won't want to be part of it. And that's because although in a globalist system, you maximize the profit to the, to the top class, to the owner class, you reduce that profit from the exactly from everybody else and so it becomes very quickly be, even before a world becomes global totally globalistic with the world government and the world health organization and the world bank see they're building the infrastructure for a world totalitarian government but even long before this happens lots of people want to opt out because it does not benefit them the 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 pressure on your personal freedoms is so great why would you want to go along with such a system that is going to remove even more of your freedoms? So that's what it's all about. And, and that's what this, this whole, uh, what they're doing in the Netherlands is they're just using the Netherlands to try to make the Netherlands that diverse utopia, that dystopian zootopia 
that you will be forced to live on. They're going to try, because the Netherlands is a high-tech country, you can try a lot of things with the data centers, with the digital ID they're going to introduce there, by abolishing cash and, and getting rid of farmers and forcing everybody to eat vegan or fake beef. The Bill Gates fake shit, you know. And... Hold on. I can't stand these immature jokers, but okay. So yeah. Uh, use a type of here. So uh, the, my country, the Netherlands, where I was born in, is is being used as an experiment, but without the knowledge even or even the involvement at all of the common people. They all all they use democracy for is to trick people, to fool people into go along going along with something. So when, for example, the Dutch PVV party, the right wing PVV party, wins the elections. They immediately get this PVV to do all sorts of concessions, basically removing everything they stand for. And that's when you realize that that's by design. The leader of the PVV is controlled opposition. It was always supposed to be like this. It's just absolutely, absolutely stupid, you know? Yeah, and the poor Dutch people, they have no idea. It's great, though, that they voted for PVV. So at least they are voting right wing, but the right wing options they get are controlled opposition. Same thing happened with the farmers protests. We had massive farmer protests in the Netherlands, which I thought might have led to an actual revolution, a popular uprising. But of course, the mainstream media hijacks this farmers movement and starts pitting the common people against the farmers, making the farmers look evil. Right. And then they also have a controlled opposition party called BBB farmers, citizens, something, some kind of movement, the Farmers Movement Party. And they use that party, again, to befuzzle and to lie to the farmers, thinking that if they only go along with this party, then finally everything's going to be all right. And it's not. Uh, so the farmers used to turn our Dutch flag upside down. Normally it's red, white, and blue. And they turned it upside down into blue, white, and red to signal that the country is underwater. We're drowning. Help us, right? We're not doing well. And so this farmers movement party gets the farmers to turn their flags back around again into the proper red, white, and blue. And they were totally conned because now they're going to be disowned anyway. The, the, the attack on pastoralism disguised as anti-racism is probably the most weirdest thing going on in our world today. On the one hand, I can explain it as Bill Gates or the Americans or the Israeli or whoever are working on fake meat that they want to use the Netherlands or Europe as a market for their fake beat. So there's a there's a financial incentive to do so, right? And then there is, however, something else going on here. Is that our people, the white people of Northwestern Europe, are descendants of pastoralists who grew up milking cattle, cows, horses, probably, probably horses first and cows, and perhaps even deer or goats. I've been to Norway to the fjords and I've seen a lot of Private households have like a bunch of goats outside, like just just 10 or so or 20, no more. And they use that for their personal consumption, I suppose, uh, for meat and for milk. Uh, you can live off of milk. The Mongolian pastoralists in northern Mongolia, they have they have deer. They herd deer around just like the Lapish people in northern Sweden and the Laplanders. And you can live off of milk and some meat. This is this is perfectly healthy for you to survive as even in the cold environments, especially, of course, in cold environments, you need a high protein diet, a high fat, high protein diet to keep your brain warm, for example, right? To keep yourself warm, you need that high fat diet. Right. And so if the European governments think the PVV is ultra right, I wonder what they think about America's right. Yeah. Well, you'd have like some, you know, hard right front, yeah. It's all for the aim to eat grains and the bugs. Exactly. The bugs will not be eaten directly, but as a powder. Yeah. So China, of course, is largely a grain and rice based society. Africa was largely throughout history, a uh, root, uh, starchy roots and sugary fruits society and some poultry, some chicken and some pork here and there. But of course, Northern European society was that pastoralist society. We were raised, we evolved on milk and meat, basically. 
right? The, uh, uh, the North Europeans have historically always been taller than the Southern Europeans and also physically bigger than the Southern Europeans. Uh, the archaeological record also confirms this. Uh, Northern European Germanic warriors were taller. The average Germanic warrior 2,000 years ago was taller than the Roman soldier. A Roman soldier had to be a certain height to begin with, and the Germans were still taller anyway on average. So you can imagine how, how the Romans feared the individual combat between one Roman soldier and one German. So that's why the Romans, of course, formed their uh, cohorts, and they fought the Germans as a, as a unit, right? Right. Yeah, they're all owned. There is no real opposition. But the Netherlands is such a fake country where it's just uh, you're watching a stage play that is being directed by others who never show their faces. For example, as I mentioned, the leader of the VVD, this is a, li a liberal party, which is called right wing in the Netherlands. Can you imagine that? A liberal party is liberal party is considered right wing in the Netherlands. Um, that just shows you how messed up it all is. And they have this Turkish lady or Kurdish lady. She came as a refugee to the Netherlands. And she is supposed to, I, I think they're trying to set her up to make her the prime minister or something. They want to deliberately, desperately have a refugee Muslim person as the prime minister of the Netherlands. And so I think our own Dutch secret services are orchestrating all of this. It's such complete total bullshit. But why? Why do you do it? Why do you do it? Why do we have to do this? Because they, they, they want to create that, that globalism that they, may, they manage. It's a managed globalism where, the, say, the Western Judeo type of people want to play the puppeteers to create this you know, stage play. And, and they want it to be a certain way. They design it, right? Because they're intellectual types, right? And so they design it from top down with, they have their blueprints and it has to be this way. And they've, they've seen it in their visions, in their dreams. It was revealed to them in a dream and it has to be that way, right? And so this is what they do. Then they top down, try to make everybody fit, it, fit into it. And everything else is a joke. The whole notion of a free press in the Netherlands, nonsense. We don't have a free press in the Netherlands. You are free to say what the government wants you to say. But you have no freedom to think for yourself. You have, you have no uh, free elections in the Netherlands. If the winning party cannot actually win any power, then what the hell do you have? A fake show. Now, we don't have a democracy. We have a, how would you even describe this? A puppetocracy. It's just a puppeteering show. You know, it's just totally nonsense, you know? Huh. So why are the new regimes in West Africa targeted by the U.S. and France? Okay, so they used to be France's colonies, and France wants to keep those, right? But Russia is convincing those countries to cut loose from the U.S. and France. So basically, Russia, Russia and China are trying to win over Western Africa. And the U.S. needs Western Africa still for whatever, you know, resources, of course, yeah? Now, so the Germans were the... Right, the special guard. Really, Germanic people were the guards of the Roman emperors. Perhaps they were, yeah. Makes sense to me. So, Johannes, have you heard of the mitochondrial theory of the origins of cancer? Uh, no, not really. I have heard, however, that cancer can be caused by overconsumption of sugar, like saccharose and sucrose sugar, because that stuff is what feeds the cancer. It lives off of the sugar in your bloodstream. So lots of people who do fasting discover that they are starting to heal from their cancer. Because when you're fasting, you're not eating anything at all. You're not feeding the cancer. And I think the food for the cancer is actually the sugar. But, all right. All right. Because Russia is gaining a foothold there, exactly. The Cold War never ended. No, the, the war for global domination is ongoing. And you have these people, Jews, but also Protestants, who, uh, who believe they are the superior people. And now others also believe that, of course. But in the Western world, in Europe, it's the Protestants who... Why? Why Protestants? Because the Protestants, when they had the Reformation in the 15th, 16th century, they cut loose from Catholicism, and the Protestants then hearkened back to the Old Testament Christianity, which is the, the doctrine of Jewish supremacy. And so the North Europeans start to believe that maybe they too are the superiors, right? And from there, you get down the USA system. That's why they sp when they speak of white supremacy, they really mean Judeo-Protestant supremacy and so I'm from the south of the Netherlands. I'm Catholic. I was born and raised uh, in a Catholic school and uh, a Roman Catholic baptized. So 
this is one of the reasons why for a very long time I could not really understand why on earth the, the leadership in the Western world is so totally opposite to everything that I stand for. And that's because maybe at heart I am much more of a Catholic person than a Protestant person. Uh, not because I'm very religious, I'm not. I never really went to church that much, but psychologically I'm more in tune with um, anti-individualism, for example. I love individualism to the point where you have a hero who fights the dragon to save his people. That is good individualism. But there's also bad individualism where you win the prize and then you laugh at the people you left behind. That's, that's the American dream, right? The American dream is that you... Uh, the American dream is that you become a billionaire and then laugh at everybody else you left behind. That's the American dream. It's really very negative. Whereas the European Catholic sense of a hero would be, you know, you are like Beowulf or you are like uh, Siegfried fighting, slaying the dragon. And of course you get riches. Of course you get the girl, but you do it to save your people. This is healthy, right? You're not just doing it for yourself. Right. Right. Let's see what the, what the common people are saying. Yeah? So it beckons us to work outside of the system, not dependent uh, on their media or money. Exactly. So we are we are ourselves trapped in these usury schemes, the schemes of financial exploitation. So a mortgage, for example, is also a form of uh, exploitation. Right. You pay you pay the debt, but also with interest, and that interest is usually the real money that the that the super rich above you and basically imagine it this way cattle graze grass they eat grass right so the soil has to always produce grass for the cows so the billionaire elites of the western world are kind of like that they are slowly they are grazing you financially and you are expected to grow back the taxes that you'll owe for next year it's 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 basically theft yeah See, I've always been like morally very right wing, right? But economically more left wing, yeah. Luther in rejected the interest. Okay, Calvin did not. Ah, exa see, that's a good point. So Luther started the Reformation, but he did not uh, believe in the usury and interest. Okay, that's very interesting. But Calvin did, yeah. And Calvinism, of course, influenced the Dutch royal family and so on and the Dutch uh, elite system. Right. So it is interesting to keep note that even in a country like the Netherlands, the Catholics have had political parties but have never been in charge of the elite system. The elite Dutch people have always been Calvinist or Protestant in this sense. Right? Yeah, it's very difficult to talk about these religious things because you think it no longer matters in the Western Europe where people have become largely atheistic. But of course, the culture is still there, right? And the differences are still there. So, Right. Maybe the USA is now based on fantasies to justify their hypocrisy. Yeah, maybe. A parasitic kleptoplutocracy alienated to every human group but they're landless clique. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what do you? What do I think of modern physics? Okay, well, I don't know what you mean, but really, like, I believe physics is real, but I don't believe the laws are fixed or constant. I think even the the laws of physics can change over time. I wrote a book about that called Eternal Struggle. You might want to see that one. My books are all available on uh, on Amazon, by the way, as uh, my book author name is Mattis Conrad. So my full name has always been Johannes Mattis Conrad. Uh, but when I I started doing my podcast, I started calling myself Johannes because uh, referring to my first name, my first first name, right? because uh, it's better for the English speaking world. And so then it, that's why it's stuck after a few years. It's stuck that way. Well, I don't know about the new physics cult yet, so maybe I'd have to look into it. I probably won't fall for it, but that's okay. Uh. All right. So I was talking about a lot of things about what's going on in the Netherlands because the political system is a joke. 
everything is fake. We are, we are just a, a puppet show. And what they call democracy is just the excuse to make you feel guilty for voting for what they're doing to you. Right? <laughs> the Netherlands is a crime syndicate. It's run by criminals who couldn't care less about the people who live there. They're actually using immigration to replace our people, but you're not allowed to mention it or talk about it or use any definitions or phrases involving it. And I think I know damn well why they're afraid of that. They're terrified of it. They're terrified of it because when people like me who are already awake, when others become awake, there will be a popular pushback. There will be a popular revolt. What are they going to do about that? They're going to shoot us all. They can't do that. There's not enough police officers and, and, and military in the Netherlands to shoot us all. You know, maybe we have 50,000 cops and 30,000 soldiers and, and 18 million people who might revolt. You're not going to stop us all. Something needs to be done and something will be done. I don't want the Netherlands to be any longer this experiment for the global open society, for the World Economic Forum. It's disgusting that they're using us as an experiment, right, to see what they can do to us and then they'll roll it out to the EU later. I think the whole European Union should have a popular revolt. Every country in the EU should have a popular revolt. And how we are going to affect this, I think, with some spiritual, a good dose of religious spiritualism to let people know that, they, that there is something more that they can rely on which lives within themselves, their own soul, and the, the connection between those souls, your collective racial soul. You know, if we become pastoralists outside of the system, barter, yeah, exactly, and they don't want that. This is why there's such a harsh attack on pastoralism everywhere. They want, they're calling milk and pastoralism racist, even though you have pastoralists in India, you have pastoralists in Mongolia, you have pastoralists in West Africa, now, by, you know, traditionally, right? And of course, it's just that the white people are the largest group of descendants of pastoralists. Of pastoralists. They want to attack our food chain, our food supply to bring us to heal or something, to bring us under their control so that we cannot escape. Either we cannot escape or we die out. But of course, that's not what we're going to do. That's why I've been speaking about reloc relocating a couple of million of our people to the subarctic regions around the north of the planet. Because there, you have an opportunity to, to do large-scale pastoralism. The Laplanders are already there doing it. You have Mongolians doing it. And we should do this on a very large scale in northwest Eurasia, in the woodlands there. Who knows how to do it? Something will have to happen, though, so that we can escape. And, of course, s gain strength to come back later, right? So what does it mean to you economically left? Here in America, most of us right-wing are the far... Most of us right-wingers are the farmers, okay? Uh, economically left, I mean that no usury, no financial exploitation. So you should be able to buy a house without having to pay interest on your mortgage or something. So that's what I mean. I think there should be, you know, housing should be free. That's almost communist. Housing should be free, but your morals should be absolutely far right. Yeah. The way that they exploit you nowadays with rents for your apartments, 1500 a month, 2000 a month, 4000 a month, Ordinary people cannot afford this. Housing should be practically for free, especially if you're starting a family. Housing should be, by definition, affordable, you know. Yeah, the problem is the death of nobility. Yeah, being noble was, yeah, not just a label, but yeah, I get what you mean. We need to bring back the real Germanic nobility in Europe, at least, Celtic nobility, an aristocracy. One that is willing to fight and win battles for its people rather than merely exploiting you by taxing your grain farmers, you know, in the feudal system. We want a nobility, a warrior nobility, a fighting nobility, a blood nobility that is willing to win victories for its people. Now, you, if, you win, if you win those victories, you get your titles, you get your land, right? Sure, but you, so there's going to be individual benefits for you but you do it for your people. And that is so missing. We have a class of people in the Western world, the billionaire class, Judeo, Protestant, whatever you want to call them, you know, and that includes Donald Trump probably, who, who really are out to maximize their own personal profit for themselves. They feel themselves so superior to everyone else. They don't care about the people. They, they think we're just the dust, dust underneath their feet, you know. 
Oh, your account was banned for speaking about Christianity. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, my accounts also get banned all the time, you know. The priests and the nobles, yeah. We need a new priestly class as well in Europe, you know. Yeah. I don't want any more immigration to the Netherlands, to Europe at all. It needs to stop. We would be better off if we accepted less wealth, but more, more of a control over who we are and what we want to do. Yeah, Jesus said you can only serve one of two masters, God or Mammon. Yeah. How can we prevent the spread of Islam in Europe? Well, right now we have 700 million non-Muslims in Europe. So yeah, there are ways if you are willing to sacrifice the big cities, for example. I wouldn't be too scared to do something about the big city problem. You know, let's talk about the big city problem. I think what they're trying to do is fuse Christianity with Islam. And they're deeply, deeply afraid of a blowback from the Christians. Because in Europe, of course, many Western European Christians have are Christians only in name. They are no longer religious in this sense. They have no religious experience with it, with it anymore. And so maybe the globalists think, oh, we'll just plaster Europe over with Islamic immigrants. That's what I think they're trying to do and make it diverse and do the Kalurgi plan. They're trying to do all that. But who says that they're going to succeed in it? That doesn't mean it will work. Right, because these globalists pretend to be like, they, they pretend to care about universal humanity, but they don't. They only care about their universal income and their, pro their profit, right? They don't care about us. They couldn't care less about us, you know? Right, we need to fight this whole thing here. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can have a look at the zero hedge. I sometimes go there. So one of the problems I always face is that, yeah, I want to overthrow the billionaire elites, but no, I don't want to do that just to end up living with Africans and Muslims. I want to overthrow the elites so I don't have to live with African, Africans and Muslims anymore, right? Whereas other people say, well, no, we should unite with the Muslims and the Africans to overthrow the elites, and then we'll have more, we can distribute their wealth. But I'm not after the wealth. I wouldn't mind burning the rich people's wealth, just burning all of it, and then we'll be free. We can have simpler lives, but we can do more. We will have much more... Uh, directing lives we would be able to just feel much more in charge of ourselves and no longer the slaves of a of a feudal neo feudal system you know all right the church made mistakes and those who wanted to start over again pray the price yeah maybe All right. I mean, there's some crazy things happening in the world. They're, they're experimenting also in Sweden, right? In Sweden, I think there's a website where you can look up what your neighbors are making. So everybody in your street, you can look up their salary, their income, their assets, their savings. Because I think that's going to be next. They're going to want to try to take away everybody's savings. The great reset is set everybody to zero, right? And you will be all be totally dependent on the state providing you with a universal basic income, basically food stamps. It's just so extreme. How do we fight these things? How do we stop these things? Well, one, one possibility is we find, we find our mutuals and we escape this nonsense and we start our off the grid stuff. But we need weapons down. How do you defend yourself? I, if, if we would leave as pastoralists to the Eurasian uh, sub-Arctic, then they're going to come after us with drones. How do we defend ourselves? You know? What we need, therefore, is first to precipitate the collapse of the technology stack. 
the whole technology stack from you know the lithium in the mines all the way to the to the to the uh, to the drones in the air that whole stack vertical stack needs to be sabotaged first and then we can free ourselves so at first and foremost i think therefore that we are going to be guerrilla rebellions guerrilla warriors true rebels in the truest sense where we rebel against the modern world we revolt against modern technology if we can somehow sabotage that technology stack then everything else we want will be possible it's it's just so important that we get this right you know if you look at the ukraine war it just recently dawned on me that europe dumped all its old military equipment in that war and all of its old ammunition stuff they don't want to use anymore but they ended they got you the taxpayer to pay for all of it of course right and they killed a half a million guys it was just to profit off of their old ammunition stock now they're going to make new ammunition stock the modern weapons that they will probably use to some end as well meanwhile you're paying for that as well you're paying for the old stuff to throw it away and you're paying for the new stuff to have it produced you know it's just so insane Right, so I like that uh, Julian Assange was freed, but I wonder, uh, I wonder what will become of him. He will likely not be able to speak about anything anymore, right? Or they'll just have him assassinated. I wonder why they kept him in prison for so long anyway. They thought they, he had something, like a USB stick up his ass or something, that he was keeping it from everybody, and they want him to hand it over or something. That's what it is, right? Right, we could destroy this technology stack somehow and then force people to go back to a more religious life here. Yeah, is there a deal or something? Yeah, there's supposed to be with Junior Assange, he has to meet some American officials on some American island in the silent ocean and then he has to uh, admit to his crimes. So he can then be acquitted or something. No, he has to admit to his crimes or something. I don't know. I don't know, something bad might still happen. So maybe they'll capture him there, you know, it's just a total joke. Do you see hope in RFK and Farage? Well, Farage is better than nothing, just like Wilders is better than nothing in the Netherlands. And Maloney and, and Le Pen. The problem with all these people is I feel, I feel that they're all pretty much controlled opposition who are not going to save us. The, the real opposition, well, that's me. That's us. That's you here in the comment section supporting this because there's just no one else really thinking about doing the radical things, right? Like, so like sabotaging the technology stack to save, to remove ourselves from this global digital ID prison. You know, they're building these massive data centers in the Netherlands. And they said that we didn't have to worry about drinking water shortages because these data centers use drinking water for cooling. Now there's a news article just two years after they started building them that we have to reduce our uh, per capita drinking water amount from 134 liters to 100 liters that's like a, a drop of almost a quarter or so right yeah Meloni, like i said yeah they're all better than nothing but what you really want what, what you're noticing everywhere is the total disappointment in the execution they say the right things but they don't execute what they said they don't deliver their promises they're they're basically fake in this sense this is really bad you know So a lot of people think like this, but they're not yeah, you know, united. Yeah, we need to get united, yeah. Gates Foundation, yeah. Culture over commerce, yeah, that's my ideal, yeah. Ukraine has lots of minerals and resources which the EU needs for electric cars and chips. Yeah, but it's more than that. It's it's for the entire technology, yeah, for phones as well and so on. Yeah. You know, if I could design my empire, I would take Northern Europe, with including also Ireland and the UK, and then Ukraine and so on, and Western Russia, and all that together, with Scandinavia and so on, right? All that together. And maybe we can add countries like Hungary and Slovakia and so on, and some Slavic nations, and maybe Italy can join as well, you know. But we'd have this kind of empire, and I think it would be the most powerful in the world. But 
the globalists don't want it or they're using it. They're, maybe that's what they fear. They know that if you would have an empire from Gibraltar or from Ireland to the uh, Ural Mountains, the whole Northwest Eurasian thing plus Europe, you'd have the most powerful empire in human history, but it would not be uh, American or Chinese. It wouldn't be Russian either. It would be a Christian empire, a Christian Sparta. Maybe the Balkans, yeah, Croatia, yeah, places like that, yeah, sure. Right, and Rome let the Irish Scottish take Rome back, yeah, perhaps, yeah. Christian Sparta, yeah, moral religious Sparta somewhere, yeah. Uh, I've been to Albania, yeah. I think they converted to Islam now, didn't they? All right. By the way, if you want to join my uh, Substack newsletter, it is free, www.jmk.info. And you can also get, uh, you can also give me donations there. I'm not good at grifting yet. I'm going to try to get people to give me money, but <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, oh, wait, that's, that's usury. No, because I'm not, I'm not doing it on purpose. You can just cut loose, when, cancel whenever you want. But, you know, if you're on my newsletter, then at least you'll be up to date. I usually write articles like once or twice a week, sometimes more. I'll send out articles that I think are interesting to people. All, all I, everything I write is always in support of our movement, right? Always in support of what we're doing in some way or form. Yeah. My thoughts on Italy. Yeah. If Maloney would simply deliver what she promised, Italy would be on the way, you know, to salvation. All right. Thanks for this live. Yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah. Thoughts on Reform UK, Nigel Farage. Like I said, yeah, it's the best you've got in the UK. I would vote for Reform if I were a UK citizen. Uh, I do hope that Nigel isn't going to push the sick people, you know, the one with the, the ones with the turbans too much, because you know, just everybody, everybody's trying to pander to these weird ass minorities everywhere. Now. I heard a rumor that Trump is choosing Vivek as his running mate. I hope not. That's just, uh, it's just so disgusting. Like, I can't get over that nonsense. Why, why do you have to do this? You have something, you know, I would, like I said, my, my standpoint is I would rather be less wealthy, but have more of my own culture, my own people, and we would feel stronger together. That is so much more important to me than just having money, but then being what, uh, an individualist who has no people. And I don't just want a people of drunks and drug users. I want a people who, who go to the gym, a people who do boxing matches to get better at it, do people who kind of like in some way help each other get stronger and healthier and more intelligent and more productive and more creative, especially, especially creative. But we would be a somewhat of a warlike people in this sense, as in we will allow our inner strengths to overflow and to come out of us yeah so that we can uh, leave our stamp on the world leave leave our mark on the world that's what we want you know yeah vivek is such a clear panderer yeah i think it's such a weirdo So reform is the only way to fix our problems with within the UK. Yeah, it's what you've got. It's the best you've got. Yeah. Right. So someone else said it. So I'll just rephrase it. They said like, my concerns are not in Kiev or Tel Aviv. My concerns are, you know, Europe and our people. Right. It, we are way too distracted by all this nonsense going on at the peripheries of Europe when Europe itself is being hollowed out from within by these subversive creatures who follow the global open society program. You know, the, I just have not, I've 
they they seem to be so powerful, but they're not all powerful, and they have flaws and they have weaknesses. And there's going to be some way or form or method that we can finally puncture through, basically uh, break the barriers, right? Or scale the wall. Like imagine you're uh, you're fighting someone's castle, you will find a way to scale those walls and break through the gates, and and just so do away with these people who are harming us so much. The Spartanization of Europe. Yeah, sounds right. Sounds right. Let's see if I can find a book about... There was a book about Sparta that I thought was really good. Uh, just going to look it up for you. There's this one book about Sparta that I would recommend. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, yeah, here. It's a book by an uh, Spanish... Eduardo Velasco, Sparta and its Law. I'll, I'll type it out for you. I thought that this book was really good. All right, I'll turn this one off. All right. Most people in the Netherlands are only interested in money. Yeah, yeah, we've become this money cult. Yeah, and that's that was caused since the past 500 years. Before that, it wasn't so, of course. Something changed to maximize our productivity and we, we fell for it. We fell for the trap, you know, sadly. And when a country gets invaded, millions of outsiders cross the borders illegally. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, Northern Canada is uninhabited, but you, you have to figure out what you can do with it. Uh, pastoralism, likely. Oh, here someone said, uh, Therapy is also a scam to pacify you, letting you... Telling you to heal. Right, right. Yeah, you know what they always do in ter therapy, in psychotherapy? They always tell you... Don't worry about the things that you can't control, right? Just focus on the things that you can control, right? But that's only as an individual, of course. If you would have friends and allies, then you could control a lot more together, right? And what if your your whole people would would for once stand up and rise up together? Then you would be able to change those things that were outside of your control. All you need is to rally it and organize it and you know, I'm going to try to play my role in that and see what I can do, you know. Yeah, kind of already for Americans. They have already covered politics in Big Korea. Yeah. It's time to really wake up, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Most psychologists are Jewish, so you know it's a scam, yeah. Yeah, probably. If, if it is there... Uh, exactly. What is most important to you, human being? It's a sense of autonomy that you yourself are using your body in an interesting way toward goals of your own choosing. That's autonomy and the autotelic way of life. That just means uh, you're working toward goals of your own choosing. The autotelic life. Uh, because telos means purpose, right? So you have a, a purpose-driven life. And then the psychologists say, oh, just don't, just give up, and just, just be yourself and just... Don't worry about the things outside of your control. It's like, no, why don't you just get strong and acquire skills and competencies and make yourself more powerful? If we would all do that, we wouldn't need psycho psychotherapy anymore, would we? No. Female therapy is not male therapy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe psychotherapy is more like for men, right? They say that, oh, you men, you want to have power and succeed in the world. Why don't you just give it up and be yourself? And like, ugh. <laughs> 12 steps for addiction. They tell people they will never heal and always stay sick. Really? Oh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course, they want to keep selling you <laughs> your addiction, yeah. You're exhausted right now. I can't imagine working for 40 years. Yeah. 
because probably probably the reason you're exhausted is you're not you're not really doing what you chose to do or what you find interesting to do but you feel like you have to do this for the money so you do it but it goes against your nature it goes against your interests right that's probably the reason why why people are burned out you are going through the motions of a life that isn't yours it's someone else's life you're, you're helping someone else really men get depressed when there's a, a missing purpose or meaning to life absolutely yeah yeah the purpose driven life is very important to us yeah we need to have something the goal but the goal you choose has to come from within it can't be something that society tells you to do it has to be something you feel like ah this is what i want to do and it can be anything and it doesn't have to lead to riches but it certainly leads you to a sense of achievement i did this this is mine now right a sense of conquest of the un of the unknown world and that's just totally missing from office life factory life you're supposed to be roaming the plains with your with your cattle or you're supposed to be hunting big game somewhere and finding great fulfillment from that and if you can't do that then you should at least be able to write the books you care to write right or make the music you want to make or design the architecture that you care about that makes you feel like powerful and overwhelmed or in awe of your own creation that's what it's all about and we don't get to do that anymore look at what they're doing nowadays in terms of architecture everything is a square box everything is drawn with a ruler or they have like a template square box template oh make it rectangular add more levels right it's all like that everything is like that now it's the low cost the low cost culture everything is low cost everything is corner cutting right yeah work therapy is productive working together yeah Produ productively as a group that's male therapy yeah doing something together yeah toward a goal you care about yeah yeah you need your nine to five for survival yeah the wayne the main reason for western emotional health problems is the media and broken families yeah i think so also you know in this globalist system they want to tear apart families so they can send one brother to the east coast and another brother to the west coast and a sister doing only fans right and so you break up the family no one has any sense of community anymore yeah architecture is so soulless now it's disgusting yeah yeah most people just want a big house and holidays yeah yeah it's disgusting yeah <laughs> I, mean, I have my right they say that right-wing people are more easily disgusted at things but of course it's about what well, it's not disgust per se it's it's the disapproval the rejection of what is not good for us we reject poor architecture low-cost architecture we reject you know soulless soulless work and we are right to do so because rejecting things that are not good for us is the first step toward healing how do aristocratic people become the arist aristocracy well they reject everything that is no good for them and this is how we should all be basically make our whole society aristocratic you know people coming out of certain parts of the third world thinking they can be like us on day one no we should reject that we should reject mass immigration reject the modern world right culture is a solution yeah You saw an Armenian church in Iran and the architecture was beautiful. Yeah, oh, you're from Iran, okay, yeah. All right. Deuteronomy 28, okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, new neighborhood bond for it, yeah, okay. So they're trying to do something new with them, huh? No, I've not seen the new Star Wars. I'm not even gonna watch it. Uh, yeah, it's probably a total joke, right? They made it about black women using okay whatever you know 
that, by the way, that's not even the reason why I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it because the previous Star Wars installments were so freaking bad. I wouldn't want to see another one anymore. They killed this franchise long ago with the Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace, they killed it with Jar Jar Binks. When Jar Jar Binks opens its mouth, it was over. Oh, you're not a Rainier. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, you're sweet. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's always been 40 people in my life, dude. And it's never a flop because I'm building something. I'm building a, a following and a community here. Something you'll never do. All right. Forge a better future here. Yeah, it's too expensive. So they finally make something nice, but it's too expensive. Man. All right, I've been speaking for 50 minutes. I'll go on for like 10 minutes more. Let's see if I can come up with something, uh, something to fi finish this off. I will put this uh, live stream on my YouTube as always at Johannes at the Great Johannes is, is my YouTube channel. YouTube monetized my channel, so now I am kind of trying to see if I can get more viewers there and see if I can make money because I'm not monetized on TikTok. TikTok because I'm Dutch, you know, and I don't. I think you could. I could have monetized it had I been in Germany, and you can monetize it in the UK and the uh, USA, right? But not, not where I live, so you can't monetize it here. Eastern Europeans need to start having more children so that they can stay Christian. Otherwise, you will be replaced by the Muslims. They're going to pour your countries full of Muslims. Is Europe going to split? Well, I'm not sure about it yet, but there may be a split between uh, uh, an Islamic Europe, an Islam, an Islamized Northwest Europe, and the rest of Europe may may be different. I wonder if at some point they are going to deport the white people from the Netherlands out. They're going to try to get rid of us. Yeah, eventually, when the Muslims are a majority, I think they'll just kill us or deport us. So we have to be prepared for that. Like I said, we should. Think of being true guerrilla warriors. We start training each other to be guerrilla warriors because we're going to need certain skill set to force these globalist bad people to submit to our will for a change. I've never heard of a Dutch Ottoman cooperation in the 80 years war. It sounds more like the Ottomans were trying to conquer Europe and they were, they were fighting Spain, right? But they were just trying to conquer Europe, of course. So that's not really a cooperation. Is it? I mean, the Ottomans have been trying to conquer Europe for, I don't know, 700 years or so. There's all sorts of new history where they rewrite everything that you've ever heard of into some some pro pro Islamic, pro diversity, pro multicultural bullshit. It's just unacceptable. Can't you just get a VPN and set up a new account? I usually create new or all right like that. Okay, yeah. Maybe I could do a VPN and then get a get a German account or something, yeah. Oh, I could have done. Yeah, I could do that, perhaps. I'll try that for my next account because I usually get banned anyway. So I'll try that for the next account. What do I think of Israel? They believe that they are superior to me. So no, I don't like them. So. <laughs> I think Israel may cease to exist when the power shifts from the USA to China or to the East. 
Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it certainly looks like the globalists are willing to cut Israel loose and just do away with it, yeah? All right, I'm running out of things to talk about, so I'm going to cut you off right here. So thanks for watching. You can go to my... Uh, uh, Substack newsletter, jmk.info. You can always stay up to date there. That's where I'll post all my long content and my articles and so on. And I'm going to post this one to my YouTube as well. Uh, my YouTube is going to be the great Johannes. That's my username there. Uh, and you can rewatch the whole thing there, right? So, uh, all right. Thanks for watching, but I gotta go.